So, would like to introduce Professor Prithvi Singh Handal, who is currently the Associate Director of the NCAT, which is National Center for Asphalt Technology, which is based in the US. And uh, NCAT, if you were to be precise, is the largest asphalt road technology center in the world. And prior to NCAT, he, he has served as the Chief Asphalt Road Engineer of the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for 17 years. And uh, he has served as a President, International Association of Asphalt Paving Technology, and also as the Chairman, American Society for Testing and Materials <coughs> International Committee on Road Paving Standards, and Chairman, U.S. Transportation Research Board Committee on Asphalt Roads, and also recently he has developed no, uh, new standards for IRC, which is Indian Road Congress. In, uh, he has also got a Lifetime Achievement Award in Asphalt Road Technology from the International Association of Asphalt Paving Technologists during the annual banquet held in Austin at US. Um, we have invited him personally here because based on the requirements that we have received from the site, wherein they wanted to learn more about the advancement in the construction technologies and how the, I mean, advancement in the construction technologies and also about the maintenance. So, over to you, sir. So you Thank can you. actually highlight. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, we start Batimo's mixed production batch. And so, in the Batimo's plant function, whether we have a batch plant or drum plant, the function of the plant is to proportion the aggregate, then dry and heat the aggregate because we cannot add bitumen unless the aggregate is dry and also heated. Both has to be done by the plant. Then we add the bitumen binder and then we mix and then we can store it or we can dispatch it right away. So these are the functions of the plants. And this one is just showing the same thing which I just just told you. The you on the top you have aggregate storage, then you proportion the feed, drying and the heating. And it also is dust collection. When we are drying, lot of dust uh, will come out of that. So we cannot allow that dust to escape to the atmosphere. So we have to collect it. And then in the second line we have the bitumen storage. Uh, we have to proportion like weigh, weigh the bitumen and feed and then mixing and then you see the truck and there is a monitoring and control. So it is pretty clear what we discussed yesterday. So we are going to discuss first the batch plant and then the drum plant. Uh, I am sure uh, I know the NHI does not allow any drum plant, they only allow batch plant but uh, you must uh, know both of them because uh, uh, drum plant are pretty popular. Uh, for jobs which are not for NHI. So, we talk about batch plant first. Uh, here is a typical uh, picture of a batch plant, but we are going to discuss uh, all the components in detail, uh, how the batch pl plant works. So, let us go, go with that. And here is a schematic of the batch plant. In the bottom left, you see the cold bins. Uh, we call it cold bin because the aggregate is cold at that point in time. So, here you can see the four uh, cold bins here where the aggregate will be fed by uh, front end loader and then there is a belt going underneath the cold cold bins. You see the black belt going and it is going you know, up you know, in, the, in the dryer drum where we are going to dry the aggregate and heat the aggregate. From there, it, it goes, goes into a hot elevate, elevator, it is called this is a shift you see, vertical shaft you see, it is called hot elevator. So, the aggregate, hot aggregate is elevated uh, to the top of the plant tower. You see the plant tower in the middle of the picture. Uh, from there, it goes through many screens and it is divided again uh, into hot bins. Uh, they are called hot bins because they carry hot aggregate. And below that, you have a uh, uh, you have a weigh scale where we uh, weigh all the aggregate and then below that uh, there is a pug mill and we, after mixing the truck comes and takes uh, the material away. We also have storage silo, you see two silos on the top right. Uh, you can store some mixture, you can start the um, plant in the morning and uh, store different types of mixes in there which can be taken away later in the day. And you also see the control room on the right side and on the left side you see the bag house where we are collecting the dust which is coming out of the dryer. When you are dry, drying you know that a lot of dust will come out. Now 
we collect the dust in the bag house and uh, uh, we can feed it back as a mineral filler because that dust is nothing but uh, crust aggregate uh, powder you know so it's as good as a mineral filler so we feed it back but i know in many plants in india we are just uh, not using the bag house uh, just letting the all the dust go into the air which is illegal but we are still doing it uh, here is a typical uh, uh, aggregate stockpile yeah, you will have different stockpile for like 20 mm 10 5 uh, stone dust or whatever and then you have the in india we call it jcb you know mm-hmm. jcb uh, otherwise they call front end loader okay. huh loader uh, front end loader is the proper term we jcb the company's name just became popular here so we use a front end loader from uh, to carry this uh, material from the stock pile to these cold bins you know you can see uh, 1 2 3 4 cold bins here so you want to make sure that there is no no mixing of these you know otherwise the our gradation will will be messed up you know so all the bins are are filled with the front end loader and then this is the side opposite of that you know uh, here you can see a belt going underneath the the cold uh, beans are open on the other side now i'm showing you this the the other side where a belt is going and aggregate is being discharged from each cold feed uh, to this uh, belt and then the combined aggregate is uh, will go to the dryer so this is a view of that now under each cold feed bin we have a strike of gate where we can control the amount of uh, aggregate falling into the belt and to fine tune that we have a uh, variable speed drive belt you know which uh, uh, also moves the aggregate so not only we can use the gate but also the speed of the drive to regulate the amount of aggregate falling uh, onto the belt so uh, these uh, two can be really regulated real good so here you see uh, at the bottom of the cold feed uh, material is falling from one of the bin to the belt and you see you can see it's like a moist aggregate you know so you have to take into account uh, how much moisture is there and then uh, from the left side you can see that the belt is uh, entering the dryer uh, that belt is carrying the aggregate from all the four three or four cold bins uh, we saw it before so it's a combined aggregate going into the uh, dryer drum and here is the inside of dry drum is a lot of flights in there which have been designed so that the aggregate is uh, is falling in front of the flame and it gets dried up and heated up there so a lot of flights are there inside the drum here is a big flame which is uh, used to dry the aggregate uh, that's on the one one end of the dry drum and uh, then you see uh, this yellow Uh, is the bag house where we collect all the uh, dust from the dryer in, in that bag house in this bag house we have uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of these uh, smaller bags which collect dust uh, these are just like a vacuum cleaner uh, we have at home uh, we also have a small you know bag in there we can collect the dust in the our but in the hot mix you know we got so many of them to collect the dust you know. so here is a the modern asphalt dash plant and uh, where we have a control of the gradation at the hot bins we did try to control the uh, gradation at the cold feed but in with the hot bins we can uh, fine tune that gradation again so uh, you can see from the top of the tower the aggregate is falling to the screens and it has to go through the screens and it will be divided into like three or four hot bins of different size of aggregate and then we can combine them uh, really good you know again so, so it's more like a fine tuning the uh, aggregate gradation so uh, from the top you can see uh, the screens uh, it will go through the screen i'll show to you in a moment and then uh, it uh, goes to the hot bins and uh, below that we have a Uh, aggregate way hopper where we'll be weighing but i'll go through that very quickly so here you can see the aggregate uh, is coming uh, 
from uh, different screen screens are the screens are more visible here in this slide there is a screen deck in screen deck we have these screens so we are uh, with the combined aggregate which is coming from the cold feed on the belt which has been dried and heated now we are using these screen uh, screens to divide it again in different sizes so these are the screens we are using and you here is a schematic of uh, let's say we take we got four screens so the the first bin on the left side will have a larger size aggregate then uh, going towards the right side it will become finer and finer so that has to uh, come through the four screens here so here we have four hot bins containing different size of aggregate so now we got to determine the gradation of aggregate in, e in each hot bin and then we got to calculate the blending how do we blend all these four of them so we can satisfy the the nhi or morth uh, uh, specification band so we are we have to do, do this exercise again again this one just the same thing which i showed you before uh, you saw the hot storage bin and so now uh, here the, the, i am just showing you only three hot bins just an example they can be four but in three so let's say we already divided into bin number 1 fine carrying fine aggregate bin number 2 intermediate bin number 3 coarse aggregate so these uh, bins are containing the hot aggregate dried and hot aggregate so now we have to uh, discharge them whatever we decided in blending like, i might say that okay i'm going to use 45% coarse aggregate 35% intermediate and remaining in you know, of fine to make 100% so i got to do that all this uh, blending calculation so now i'm ready to discharge uh, whatever kg uh, i to discharge from uh, bin number 3 so i open that you know gate of the bin number 3 and discharge on the weigh scale we call weigh hopper and you see a scale here so uh, i can uh, it's all done by mechanical computer today but in the old times uh, the person was done, doing manually you know as as soon as let's say 250 kg load was achieved then shut off the bin number 3 you know but now everything is done mechanically so first i discharge the uh, bin number i think it was the bin number 3 or 2 1 bin number 3 bin number 3 coarse aggregate i discharge first then i discharge uh, <coughs> the intermediate size then i discharge the fine size and then uh, if i got a mineral filler silo Uh, i also add that as well you see that on the left side so once i have all everything is done then on the weigh hopper so i know exactly uh, how many kilo you i have the material in that batch and then i have to weigh my bitumen in a weigh bucket like how much bitumen in kg i have to add so it's all uh, weighed in the bucket and the bucket you see on the right side is filled uh, to the mark which will give you uh, the desired kg so uh, that bitumen that bucket will contain enough bitumen for one batch uh, in the pump mill so you can see the connection uh, from the bitumen weigh bucket to the uh, to the pump mill on your left side and on top you see the the spray bar for the bitumen so now we have uh, you saw the, you see the pump mill on the top so i first i am going to do the dry mixing of the aggregate so everything get mixed up and then i will add bitumen uh, and then i will do a wet mix cycle so dry mix cycle wet mix dry mix cycle might be 10 15 second wet mix cycle might be 30 second or 45 second or whatever it takes to get a good coating so here is just a view of the pump mill from outside it's a twin shaft you can see two shafts here and that's the inside of the pump mill you can see lot of paddles in there to get a good mixing uh, and we have to make sure that we don't overfill the pump mill or underfill the pump mill if i overfill the pump mill with too much of uh, mix you know in the pump mill you can see that here that in the top the mix will just keep on floating it will never really get mixed up you know so you will have many uncoated particles because of the overfilling now under the under underfilling also the mixing efficiency won't be there uh, moreover you might uh, start to age the bitumen more because you have less you know 
uh, amount of mixing so their aging might be more so we don't want to overfill or underfill or whatever is the design capacity of the pug mill that's what you use so here we have everything is uh, mixed up and you see the truck uh, which will uh, carry the mix to the job site and here is the computerized control room where he, uh, the person has all the information he is controlling everything uh, today everything is mechanized uh, like this is a screen from the computerized badge you know you can see, you, you see how much on the right side you can see a bin number 1 bin number 2 uh, how many kg is required and how much is actually uh, placed and all that so everything is in uh, in one place here you can see that so with that we go with the drum mix plant and as i said you may may not be an nhi project but a uh, lot of drum mix plants are being used on state highways and other highways and cities and all that so you must know about drum mix plant as well so drum mix plant uh, uh, here is a picture of a drum mix plant the main thing which you see here is that the drum mix plant the operation is continuous you know. in the batch plant you are making one batch at a time there's a difference between batch and drum plant in the drum plant the whole operation is, is going on all the time until you shut it off you know so if you, you don't have any truck lined up you know if there's no truck there then uh, you must have a storage silo which you see on the left side so the mix is carried over to the sto storage silo and you can store it there or you can start the plant early in the morning in the us they start at six o'clock and they have lot of amount uh, by the time they start paving at eight o'clock a lot of uh, mix is already in their silo so there is no you know uh, stopping any problem so in the drum mix plant uh, the difference here is that in the batch plant we were using the drum only for drying and heating in the drum plant we are using using the drum both for drying and heating plus also mixing there is no pug mill here you know so that's the main difference here between batch and and again we uh, as far as the cold feed is concerned we are the same thing both of them no difference here you can see four cold feed and the other side same thing you know there this is the same thing in batch or drum plant uh, again uh, the bag house uh, is same in both of them so here you can see here that uh, uh, you can see the co uh, cold bins on the top uh, middle of the top uh, and the, uh, then you see the drum at the bottom and you see a belt uh, con uh, conveying the combined aggregate to the to the drum uh, i i i hope you can see that belt you know on the top cold feed and at the bottom uh, right side is the drum and in between you see a belt which is carrying the combined aggregate to the drum and so here you can see the on the left side the combined aggregate uh, is coming to the drum there is a funnel type thing you know the aggregate is being dropped in the drum and the drum will do the dual job it will won't not only dry and heat it will also mix the bitumen in there so that is another view of the drum you can see here now here is a schematic of how it happens you know uh, you have a flame on the left side of the drum and the wet aggregate is falling uh, from the left side so and bitumen is added you see the liquid asphalt that means bitumen in the us they call it asphalt so liquid asphalt means liquid bitumen hot bitumen so there's a line going in there black line you see that uh, so bitumen is uh, is going into the drum uh, on in the lower part so what we have in the, okay so in 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 the left side we have the drying and uh, heating operation on the right side we have a mixing operation so the blade inside the this kind of drum uh, have different design for uh, drying and heating where you are just tumbling the aggregate in front of the flame whereas in the lower part of the drum has a different design of the blades because it does the mixing part so the blades have to be different design uh, here is a interior view of the blade and this will be different for drying and different for mixing so here we have two phases in the dry as i said before the primary phase is just to dry and heat the aggregate the secondary phase is mixing with the bitumen you see the bitumen is being sprayed in there and then you see arrow 
on the right side the hot mix is coming out on the right side so you can see here in the drum mix plant we don't have any hot mints we don't have any pug mill everything is being done over here so this means that you have a, have a very good control on the cold feed otherwise like a garbage in garbage out if you don't have a good control on the cold feed you don't have good control on the gradation of the mix which is coming out so here is a uh, view that how do we add a wrap wrap is a reclaimed asphalt pavement material it's called wrap in the, you see in the middle uh, after we do any milling we can recycle the bc or db whatever you have uh, asphalt or bitumen is 100% recyclable 100% so in this uh, what in the in the in the us all the drum plant almost all the drum plant have a collar in the middle you see there is a you see the wrap in the, the wrap, wrap is being introduced in the funnel and there is a collar uh, in the middle of the drum so on the right side uh, the aggregate is uh, being fed it goes through the flame get heated and all that and then we add a wrap and wrap will also get wrap is at uh, air temperature ambient temperature it is cold so it will get heated up and over and get mixed up with the hot aggregate and then down the line we add the liquid asphalt which is liquid bitumen so we are adding bitumen so it get mixed up so this way we can do recycling it's called hot recycling and we'll talk about that more tomorrow in detail but all i want to say here is that in the future uh, we don't have this kind of uh, drum mix plant in india we don't have this provision of a center collar where we can add a wrap and in the future we got to modify our uh, drum plant to facilitate uh, recycling we have to do that right now we don't have it uh, here is a big picture of the uh, the middle collar where the the wrap is being added Uh, you see the, the on the left side the aggregate is going inside the drum and the in the middle the wrap is recycled uh, reclaimed as for payment material is going there so that's how the drum uh, plant will look in the us but most of them are like that and there is also a double barrel drum mix plant and uh, to my knowledge there are three or four uh, in india right now they were imported from the us Uh, so so you must understand that because this double barrel is allowed on the uh, nhi projects so you you have to understand this one as well this is a very good concept uh, double barrel means uh, drum within a drum that we call double barrel uh, so uh, what happens is that the aggregate is, is introduced uh, in the inside drum and superheated it superheated in the inside drum and then it meets the wrap in the annular space annular space is the space between the two drums so in the inside drum all we are doing is heating and uh, drying and heating the aggregate and then the aggregate comes in the space between the two drums which we call it annular space and there we are going to add uh, wrap we can add the bitumen and mixing will take place in the annular space so the shell of the inside drum is used as a shaft of coater the inside drum has outside has all these pedals you know and outer shell does not rotate okay i think maybe this this picture will make it more clear here is a double barrel drum mix plant and as i said there are three or four of them in in the in india right now they are working on nhi projects so here you can see here that the drum the long drum inside drum is longer outside drum is somewhat smaller in length so you can see here that the virgin aggregate is added on the right side on the top and flame is uh, burner flame on the left side so the aggregate is coming towards the flame that's why we we call it counter flow drum the other ones were like parallel flow this we call counter flow so the aggregate is going towards the flame as gradually is heated up and then it goes uh, at the bottom is goes goes between the two drums the we called annular space uh, i know you guys out there you cannot see my pointer but at the lower left you know the heated aggregate is entering the space between the two drums and that's where we are going to add wrap 
on the top you see the wrap we claim the milled material and bottom you see the liquid asphalt which is a liquid bitumen vg30 or whatever pmb whatever you are so the space between these two drums is being used to add wrap add bitumen and mixing and the mixing pedals are tied up to the inner drum so the inner drum is moving uh, outer drum is not moving and then the hot mix is coming out uh, on the right side so it's a, it's a very good concept you know because the uh, milled material is not coming into contact with the with flame uh, there is no way uh, flame is uh, uh, not hurting the uh, wrap or b liquid bitumen or whatever is away from that. So, it is a very good concept and I hope more of these drum plants will come in, in India. Here is the picture of the double barrel uh, drum plant. Uh, it was outside, actually outside is, is you, can, you can touch it you know it is not hot. Then uh, uh, any kind of uh, plant whether we have drum plant or base plant we have insulated bitumen tank we can have it underground we can have overground uh, these days we have vertical tanks and here the bag house again you in the drum mix plant and then again you can see the drum on the right side you see the bag house and this is the conveyor uh, if no truck is coming up you know then the mix can be conveyed in these uh, buckets to the storage silo where it can be stored you, you can see three silos here uh, in the US uh, uh, within the city you know there are different kind of mixes are in demand sometimes the municipality will come they have their own mix design sometimes the state will come they have their own mix type you know so it's like more like a grocery type business so sometimes they will store three kinds of mixes you know in the three different silo and whenever any truck comes up you know they can discharge to that but but in any case in a drum mix plant is always better to have a storage silo because the drum is working all the time and if you don't have any truck you know then you got to stop it and stop and go is not advisable on a drum mix plant so here a truck is being uh, fed with the, the storage silo on the top again we have the same kind of uh, computer control room and this one is just a historical picture i'm showing from the united states in the old time in like 1910 or something like that uh, the plants were uh, driven by steam they were run by steam and there was no electricity there so you can see here all these guys were working maybe more than 100 years ago to produce uh, hot mix asphalt in the US so if you got a good uh, drum mix plant good hot mix plant very good control and gradation bitumen content you will get a good road like this one. Uh, with that, uh, uh, let us open up for any questions you have about the mixed production, only mixed production. Uh, any questions here? Or? How, how do we maintain the? Okay, the, the question here is that. <coughs> And, and that's a very good question that how do we maintain the gradation uh, in a drum mix plant when we don't have any hot bins where we don't have any chance to recombine them and fine tune them well what's happening in the US is that in the US right now 90% of the plants being manufactured in the US are drum mix plant and they are used on interstate national highways everywhere only 10% plants are best plant right now in India in the US because they have mastered the art of uh, cold bins so much you know they calibrate the cold feed so so good taking into account how much moisture you have what kind of gradation you have and they control it uh, com with the computer that your cold feed are giving exactly what whatever you want so you can recombine them uh, and you get a so in the US the experience has been that if your uh, drum mix plant is, uh, is, uh, is the latest sophisticated then your gradation is as good as a best plant. Now that thing has yet to come to come to India that is why the NHI you know is very conservative and one time that was the case in the US when the drum mix plant were introduced there the same questions were asked there that how do we get that you know but 
uh, they became very sophisticated and I'm hoping that uh, right now our Dremix plant here are not that sophisticated. So we, if we make them sophisticated just like US, just like you saw the dr double barrel drum plant, you know, which is, uh, f there have been four drum plants have been uh, imported uh, in, uh, in India, double barrel. They don't have any heart mix, uh, heart bins or whatever, you know, same thing there. Uh, so uh, if we can make those kind of, uh, so I don't see any problem in using drum mix plant because as was asked, you know, you have to have good control on the cold feed. You have to calibrate it real good, real good every day, depending on how much moisture, you know, moisture content varies, then the flow will vary with the uh, gate setting you have done, you know, and that belt is going, you know, around. Uh, that might be good for a, one particular moisture content. If the moisture can't change, then you have to change it. You know. So in answer to uh, the question is that we have to make the drum mix plant as sophisticated as in the US and then we don't need any batch plant. Uh, we, we in India are, are hung up on this uh, mineral filler. We always want to add mineral filler. Uh, we are just hung up with that. Nobody else is in the world is. Like in the US, what's happening the most of the time when you collect the dust in the bag house, now that, that dust is a mineral filler. It's not a dust, it's a mineral filler. It came out from the aggregate crushing. So that's as good as mineral filler. So in the US, what they do is that Whatever dust, uh, dust mineral filler is required uh, in the mix, you know, it always comes out from the bag house. And they always have some sort of surplus in the bag house, which they have discard. They have a problem of surplus. In India, what is happening is that in India, we just throw all the dust in the air. We are polluting the, our atmosphere. Nobody checks it, you know. And then, because we are throwing in the air, we are short of that bag house fines. When we are short of that, we say, oh, add cement, add lime or whatever, wasting our money. So what we should do is what is done in the, in the U.S., collect all the dust, you know, in the bag house. And from that, you send it that to the mineral filler silo up, up there. Use all of the bag house dust as much as you can. Use a mineral filler like a hydrate lime only when you have a stripping problem. When you have a stripping problem, you want to add 2% hydrate lime. And then, obviously, that will replace the bag of fines. You have to add less bag of fines from that because to make room for 2% mineral, 2% hydrate lime. Did I answer your question or? Sir, here the question is. Uh -huh. Whether we should add the bag of filler from the external or directly from the aggregate, if it is coming, we can retain it, sir. There, there, there are two ways. Uh, you are asking that how do we add the bag house from the bag house? How do we add, take it to the uh, take it up up there, right? Is that what you are asking? Yes, sir. Okay, there are two systems they are using. They, in the U.S., they have two system. They have a screw conveyor where uh, the dust from the bag house is conveyed through a screw conveyor either to a silo on the top. And they can regulate the amount at, uh, which is carried with a screw conveyor. I don't know what screw conveyor is like a mechanical thing which takes it up there. And sometimes they have a silo on the top, sometimes they don't. Sometimes the screw conveyor goes, you know, directly into the way hopper. But it's uh, conveyed there. I, I am in favor of uh, having a separate silo. So it can be stored there and, you know, uh, put in the mix, you know. So uh, I don't know whether that... Does that answer your question still or? Yes sir, yes sir. Means no. uh, that the bag of filler material should be added from externally, correct me sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It should, it should be weighed yes, uh, and uh, collected and and don't treat them like a dust. It's a good material, it's a mineral filler. Call, also call that a mineral filler. So we are not hung up on mineral filler terminology which we have in India. We are using unnecessary cement or all kind of things you know expensive you don't need that any other question thank you sir hmm.